This is a seven foot two, seven three guy. He averaged twenty three and eight last season and three assists and shot fifty percent from the field and thirty eight percent from three. And it feels like no one cares. It feels like no one's excited about Porzingis. It feels like all the focus is on, oh, he's injury or prone. Oh, Marcus Smart's gone, and all those things are true. But at the end of the day, the Celtics have a guy who just averaged twenty three points on near fifty forty shooting. Like, I feel like people are really not comprehending just how good Kristaps Porzingis was last year for the Wizards, right? He wasn't played at an all-star level. And as much as, again, love Marcus Smart, Brad Stevens got Kristaps Porzingis in two first-round picks for Marcus Smart. Like, again, that comes with the injury issues, that come with the concerns, the plantar fasciitis. But when Kristaps Porzingis is on the court with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, that might be the best trio in the NBA. <laughs> if they're all healthy, that might be the best. That, that That's the top, right? And then you add in the fact that they have an all-defensive guard in Derek White, an all-defensive center in Robert Williams. You have Al Horford, who just shot 44% from three. You have Malcolm Brogdon, who just shot 44% from three. And then you have all of these, you know, role players. You have Sam Hauser, who's a three-point sniper. You have, you know, um, <clears throat> Peyton Pritchard, who can shoot it. You have Steve McCall, Little Shapers, all these depth pieces now behind these guys. Jordan Walsh. The Celtics have three guys who could legitimately score 20 points a night this summer. And usually when you're talking about like a, a guy like that, you're like, oh, well, can he defend? Kristaps Porzingis is an amazing defender, too. He's great in the drop. He, he He's not as quick in the pick and roll, but he's seven foot three. So he could probably make up for a little bit of that on the defensive end. He just averaged 1.5 blocks last year and almost to steal a game. Like he's a great defender added to an already great defensive team. And I feel like since, you know, everyone, oh, they took so many threes last year. They were the second best defensive team in the regular season last year. And you're adding Chris stops for Zingas to know you're losing Marcus Smart, but you still have an all-defensive point guard in Derek White, who, as much as I love Marcus Smart, was better than Marcus Smart on defense last year. Like, I just, I feel like people aren't fully excited about Porzingis who, you know, not to mention, played 65 games last year <laughs> and he'll have more leeway to get some rest. I, I feel like people are really not excited enough about the Porzingis edition. Like this is, he is going to be so, so, so fun to watch next to the Jays next year. He's going to open up the floor. They, they've had, you know, they, they've tried out some big threes in terms of, okay, Kyrie was there and then they had Kemba there, but they've never had a star big man with them, right? And so I think it's going to give them a new look. I, I'm super excited for Porzingis. I feel like more than the consensus and I feel like the consensus would be a lot more excited for Kristaps. New FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube at YouTube TV. One of the interesting things, I think, you know, you mentioned it, the ability to have three 20-point scorers in the team at the same time. Obviously, at, at some point during the season, they'll have them all on the floor at the same time. It's going to be a you know, it's good. There's three of your closing five right there. I think we'll add Derek White and we'll see what happened yeah. to the last spot. When you think about adding another 20-point scorer on the team, you think about how many teams in the NBA can boast three 20-point scorers on the same team at the same time. The one really quick one that you can come up with in terms of, oh, yeah, they're going to be able to add, they have three 20-point scorers at the same time. That's the Phoenix Suns. That's Kevin Durant. That's yeah. Devin Booker. That's Bradley Beal. And guess what the Phoenix Suns are? A pretty loaded roster with top-end talent. Uh, a team that is a very interesting team in the Western Conference. And a team that's probably going to be heard from in terms of, you know, people betting on the NBA title or the Western Conference mm-hmm. game. Like, like obviously, the Nuggets as we've talked about ad nauseum on this show. Nuggets should be, and and I, I mean, we'll see what it is come tip-off, but they should be the favorites to win the whole thing considering how easily they did it last year. Ran but through. <laughs> you, you look at a team like Phoenix, that's a team that could threaten the best team in the league. No question. Boston's just the Eastern Conference version of that, and I would add this. They're... I think a slightly deeper team altogether than the mm. Phoenix Suns. Like Phoenix went out there, and I think Phoenix is going to be a very interesting experiment. I can't wait to see what it looks like on the floor. I can't wait to watch 82 games of how they managed to put things together. But like you look at that roster, and yeah, they got a top four of Kevin Durant and Devin Booker and Bradley Beal uh, and uh, DeAndre Ayton. That's an interesting four guys. But after that, you got a bunch of vet minimum guys, and it's really kind of scary. Boston has, you know, 
a, a, I think a pretty good top four with Derek White and 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 Tatum and Brown and Porzingis. But I kind of like some of the other pieces. Like Rob Williams is a little bit more, I don't know, um, accomplished than most guys in the Phoenix Suns. Al Horford is a little more accomplished than any, than most guys in the Phoenix Suns. And say what you will about Malcolm Brogdon, and, and I've been uh, a guy that's given him a lot of flack over the past couple of months. Like he just has more experience than, than, than most guys on Phoenix's roster. So can Boston really be a better version of the of the Phoenix Suns, but out east when you look at everything all together? I absolutely agree. I mean, like you said, the top four in Phoenix is great, but then you've got I mean, if you're each going one to one with the rosters, it's Robert Williams versus Jock Londale, I think is who they have down there, or, or Drew Eubanks, or one of those two guys. I get them mixed up. And then it's Eric Gordon versus Malcolm Brogdon. And then <clears throat> there's just a lot more depth. And there are plenty of other teams around the league who could have a guy go for 20 points, like Philly has Embiid and Tyrese Maxey and uh, kind of James Harden. But <clears throat> like they could all go for 20 points. Um, but it just feels like the Celtics legitimately have three established all-star players like Porzingis hasn't been an all-star in a few years but he played at an all-star level for the Washington Wizards last year and if they won a few more games he probably would have been in the game um and then you add the role players in and I I've been huge on Derek White and I really think he could have an even better season um as the team's starting point guard and as much as it's weird to say because Porzingis is in town I think he'll scoring will go up I think he'll have the ball in his hands a lot more like he's gonna be great Horford's gonna take a step back but that's because he's probably gonna be needed for the playoffs <clears throat> I think Robert Williams is another player you know people don't talk about enough because last year he didn't play to the best of his ability but that's because he was coming off surgery right like he's full off season now knock on wood to get healthy and come back and play well next to Porzingis and now I don't know I'm very excited I've seen a bunch of like criticism about the trade you know you see all online like oh the Celtics won't be as good in the regular season but maybe they'll be better in the playoffs it's just I feel like people are really underestimating just how good Kristaps Porzingis is at basketball like he's he's so good New FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube at YouTube TV. 